So the Internet of Things, that's mm -hmm. a term that gets thrown around a lot, but the definition can be a little hazy. What right. does it mean to you? I think it's, it is something that's thrown around a lot, and the reason it's really hazy is because we're still working out what the Internet of Things means, and I think people approach it from a number of design perspectives. In general, um, I would say the Internet of Things is how do we connect things, objects, the table, um, you know, uh, the light bulbs in, in the building, all of these things, how do we connect cars, trains, everything to the Internet in a way that objects can become more meaningful. Okay. So, for example, a light bulb knows whether it's on or off, but a light bulb that isn't connected to a network um, can't be controlled from a remote location. We can't know how much electricity is being used by that light bulb unless it has some way to communicate that. Mm -hmm. So the idea of the Internet of Things is if we start enabling everyday items, um, both from, from kind of public things like park benches or, um, or tables to uh, private things like my lights, my washing machine, mm -hmm. my kitchen, to the Internet, what could we do? What could we enable um, with life? What could we change about our lives to be more efficient or to enhance uh, people's lives. Now, what role is JavaScript going to play with that? Well, I think one of the one of the complexities that we have while dealing with the Internet of Things is that there are a number of real constraints. Mm. So, um, for for sure, one of the things that's definitely happening is computing power is getting cheaper. But we have this terrible constraint, which is that batteries really aren't getting more efficient. Um, the uh, the the common thing that everybody talks about is Moore's law. So Moore's law is computing power doubles every 18 months. Mm -hmm. But the problem is is that um, batteries, in order to double the amount of energy per kilogram in batteries, take something like 10 years currently. So like the current trend is about every 10 years we're doubling the capacity of batteries, and that's a much slower cycle. So the uh, putting computing power into everything requires lots of energy. It requires lots of available energy to power the computers, and that doesn't correlate well with um, with the, the, the running, that pa running that computing device. So instead, what we can say is, well, now we have all of this available network. We've got 3G, we've got 4G, Wi-Fi everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we can start to use those technologies to change the balance. Computing the cloud is extremely cheap. Great big data center full of computers that we can very easily replace connected to a big power station with lots of available power. So mm -hmm. that does all of the computing and we put the very small computing on the device. Now, the things that connect those together is the data. Right. I'm a table, you know, um, somebody's put something on me, I'm a chair, somebody's sitting in me, I'm a light, I'm on or I'm off. Um, by treating those things as events, we're able to make it very easy to communicate between the cloud and the devices. It's very efficient, it uses the least amount of power. Mm -hmm. And that's where JavaScript comes in. Okay. JavaScript comes in to enable that event approach that people have been doing in browsers and people more recently have been doing in Node. Um, and using that kind of event-driven connection um, really creates a powerful uh, bond between the Internet of Things and all of this cloud computing. Now, where is it now? I mean, that, that's very clear. Sure. Know, that, that makes a lot of sense. But is that theoretical at this point, or is that being put into practice? So it's a mix of both. And I think this is, you know, uh, in terms of which devices are internet enabled, obviously people are going for the more expensive devices first. Mm -hmm. um, sure, but there right. are definitely some applications that are real world. So um, there was a, a conference called Node Summit, um, and the winner of that conference was a company called Safer Aging. Um, and they um, won the best use of Node, and what they're doing is they're applying Node um, to the Internet of Things by installing sensors and devices in the homes of um, independent elderly people. So if grandma or grandpa wants to stay living on their own, um, and everybody wants to enable that, everybody wants to give them a good quality of life, enable them to keep um, living in as, as an independent adult, but we of course worry about their safety and health. Mm -hmm. um, and of course elderly people have a tendency to fall. So safe aging is using this technology in order to discreetly and um, with privacy monitor um, the, the uh, elderly adults and make sure that they haven't fallen over. Okay. So grandma is in the hall, she's now in the living room, she's safe. Grandma is in the hall and she's not moving. Maybe now we need to you know, call her son or call her daughter and say, you know, you should give grandma a call on the phone and just make sure that she's okay. Right. So some of those things and, and enabling all of those kind of disparate sensors, enabling all of that technology, they're really using JavaScript to its best advantage and using Node to its best advantage in order to enable that kind of technology at an affordable price. Okay, so last question. We've talked a couple of times over the years about Node. Sure. 
How has it evolved over the last two years or so? So I think um, when Node, and, and Node's still pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Node um, was, was really first released to the public in February 2009. So, mm -hmm. you know, now that's a little over three years. Right. And I think what we've seen is more and more people really latching onto the technology. So, I mean, even a year ago, um, there were a few names, a uh, few big names that were public about what they were doing with Node. And now what we're seeing is the startups that invested in Node early are coming up and showing you know the really amazing things that they're doing and, mm -hmm. and getting some prominence so um, uber is is uh, famous for their taxi cabs yep. um, they're prominently using node um, Voxer are famous for their voice application they're prominently using node and then we're also seeing much bigger enterprise companies that are starting to use node so LinkedIn have been extremely open about their use of node as are Yahoo um, and then recently Walmart have been um, open about their use of Node. And I think this is where we're really starting to see a technology um, where people are very comfortable with JavaScript and they're taking that experience and that knowledge in their organization. Um, and we're seeing both the risky startups, but then also the more conservative enterprise corporations using Node. And I think that gives me a lot of confidence that Node is both becoming stable and it's in a place where companies are willing to invest in it and take risks, mm -hmm. um, but also that we've got to a point where um, it's a technology that's, that's becoming real and is gonna, is gonna kind of move to the next level and not fizzle out. Right. And I think that's really been epitomized by, um, I mean, the, the most significant release has been the 0.6 release, um, and now we have this first-class Windows support and with the support of Microsoft, I feel like there's going to be a whole new wave of Windows developers that are really starting to get interested in Node now. And we're really starting to merge the communities where, in many languages, the uh, traditional open source Linux, Unix-based communities were very separate from the Microsoft-based communities. Mm -hmm. And I have, a, I have a real hope that we're now starting to see both developers from a traditional Microsoft background and developers from a traditional Linux, Unix background that have all been writing JavaScript and now starting to converge on a platform and use it together. Right. Thanks so much for being with us. Appreciate you taking Mate, the time. Thank you. Right.